Welcome my friends, I am back with last video in our series of uh, uh, steps to improve Spark performance. So uh, today we are going to discuss two ways uh, to improve Spark performance and uh, uh, I believe these are going to be very helpful for you during interview also and during any kind of production deployment or any kind of issues if you are facing in your project okay so today's approach is using vectorization a very less number of people are aware that uh, uh, vectorization is available with spark also some people have used it with uh, with hive but i have seen very few people who are aware that uh, spark also has the vectorization feature so people who are not aware with vectorization let me you know brief them about it so normally when you process data you process it row by row so in spark in vectorization you use group of records and then apply the operation on that so when spark generates the code to process records uh, it uh, you know it it treats each operation that you have written in your SQL statement or in your RDD data as an anonymous operation and uh, it calls that as anonymous function uh, in when it generates the final code so that that leads to uh, you know not so optimized code generation and uh, uh, you know amount of CPU cycles that are required amount of uh, CPU usage that it needs is, is pretty high. So uh, sometimes the hierarchy of those uh, function calls can also be very, very deep. So uh, in, in brief, the code generated is not uh, good. So if you use vectorization, Spark knows that all the, uh, in uh, before I explain vectorization, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, when you're using spec vectorization, it is mandatory to use a columnar format. So if you're using vectorization, you will pass it an array of records of the same column. So Spark will know that all these records are of the same time type and it will uh, it can just iterate over them and apply a operation on that. So ultimately the low level code that is generated is of very high quality as compared to the uh, you know row uh, uh, as compared to the other situation so you can use vectorized uh, uh, table you can create uh, you can enable it uh, in in hive and you can use spark parquet vectorized uh, 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 parquet and and you can create uh, you can get very good uh, uh, performance for joins aggregations and filter kind of operations cool so next is uh, using bucketing again uh, i have seen people using bucketing with hive but people using bucketing with spark are very you know very few people are aware so you can use bucketing with spark also uh, you know uh, if you want to improve the performance of your joints normally people use broadcast joints but broadcast joints can only be used when the table one table is small so that you can broadcast it over uh, all the executors there will be a lot of situations when uh, both the tables are huge and you want to join them so in that situation you can create both of make both of these tables bucketed uh, tables and then you can avoid the shuffle operation that is happening while doing the join and uh, you know you will get far more superior uh, join performance because Spark already knows that what data sits in which bucket. So the whole purpose is that when you bucket, you are pre-doing shuffle and sorted and and storing it so that hoping that you need to do that join multiple times. So so that every time you uh, you you save on that sort and shuffle operation. So uh, please use bucketing and uh, vectorization in your Spark code. It will definitely give you huge performance boost. I hope this video was useful. Please subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching this video.